to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I try uh, at camp uh, to be there for whatever the young people need. They had to, uh, they've set up this, they call it a zip line. The camp lays, is, is down kind of in a low area, and there's a tremendous amount of uh, rock, big chunks of limestone and such, being cut out of the hillside there above it. But you go up to the top of the hill, and then they've built this big platform area that's a series of steps going up. And then from that, they ran cables all the way back across that big gully back to the camp. And they put the young people in a harness, and they have a helmet on, and uh, all of this. And then they ride the zip line, they call it, all the way back to the camp. It uh, looks high enough that I had absolutely zero interest in writing it. Uh, Mandy and Katie wrote it one after the other, and I thought, sure, they'd just squeal all the way, but they didn't make a sound. They just, all the confidence in the world. Found out later, the weight limit is uh, 250 pounds, and so uh, I could cut one leg off and still exceed that probably, so uh, I didn't have to worry about riding it. But one little uh, bit of trouble we had at camp, Jeremy goes to buy a token to ride the zip line, and they told him they didn't have any more tokens. That doesn't make any sense to me to make all of these announcements about the zip line and then say there's no more tokens. So I go with him down to the office, and I said, he came to buy a token, and they told him there were no more tokens. And they looked at me, pulled the drawer open, got a token out, and gave it to him. <laughs> and I almost, I just kind of <laughs> just walked away because I, I'd just rather be cursed at than lied to. And they sat right there and lied to that boy. If that's all the tokens you're going to sell that day, tell him that. You're waited too late or whatever. But, but I, I felt like because I walked up there, I didn't try to intimidate anybody. I just wanted to understand what, what's up. You make all these announcements, and then he comes in to buy it. So they gave him a token, and I had to be somewhere else. So I drove hit Jeremy up. You have to drive out down the road just a little bit. And then he gets there, and they said, oh, your token is not till 412. After the, so he comes all the way back, and he did get his money back, but that that's the only problem, I guess, we had at camp. But I, uh, I, I didn't understand that, and that was, to me, just borderline explosion. You know, it, it wouldn't, it, there just wasn't any sense in that. They should have said, we're not selling any more tokens today. You know, that would have been different, but because I walk up there, then they open the drawer, and there's a drawer full of them there that they said they didn't have anymore. And to me, that was quite frustrating, but I don't have to regulate everyone's time. And this, the staff that works the zip line at a certain hour, they have to be somewhere else working something else. I can understand all of that. Just tell us you're out of time. You're too late. You know, but uh, I've never said anything wrong or out of place and so you know you know I, I you know 
he that's without fault, let him cast the first stone. But anyway, uh, Jeremy got his money back and uh, all was well. Psalm 119. There were some songs at camp that I really want us to to learn uh, and I, my problem is I enjoyed the song so much I didn't write down the names but there was a, a different, they sang one song it's uh, I have decided to follow Jesus but a completely different melody than what we usually sing and to me that it was so good and then uh, they, uh, a song that they did quite, I believe they did it every night, I Need Thee. Uh, do you remember the name of that song? Tell me it's I Need Thee. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. And it's really good. It's really, really good beautiful the way the melody goes but I don't know the name of it so uh, anyway there that was that was good and uh, so uh, hopefully we can get that and and somehow if we can get the sheet music brother Colt can play it and then we can learn how to sing it Psalm 119, I want to read the first three verses tonight. <clears throat> Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. Verse 1 and verse 2, blessed are. And the word blessed here means happy. Happy. Our Father, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your word and we ask that you'd help us tonight. I pray in Christ's name, amen. Hundreds, 176 verses in Psalm 119. I, maybe you remember, I hope you remember, we have already studied Psalm 119 in Sunday school verse by verse. Uh, some key, we're not going to study that. I, I want to deal with tonight with this idea of, of this blessedness. In contrast, look over to verse 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. We are blessed, God is blessed. But it's two different words, two different ideas. The word for blessed in verse 12 means adored, worshipped, bowed to, reverenced, those kinds of thoughts. But in 176 verses... We have 184 references to divine instruction. And that's the key to the blessedness. We're living in a society of church-going people, and I've heard, pre I've heard a preacher say it this week. We're more Bibles, more Bible schools, more churches, but we are biblically illiterate We want the happiness without the word of God. And it's not going to happen. Eventually, life's pressures, eventually, life's griefs are going to lay hold on us. And the happiness is going to be taken away. If your happiness is just based on happenings and circumstances and good times and everything going smooth, then your happiness is temporary. All right? And your happiness is more in your head 
than in your heart. And I hope I'm not preaching down to you. Uh, I'm just wanting to instruct. Our Constitution, what is it promises? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, I was listening as Brother Gene was talking. He had me thinking one way, and then he got into the different things he likes to eat, and I got hungry and forgot my train of thought that he'd got me to. When he said pork tamales, I lost everything else. If the doctor told me no more tamales, I would say call Dr. Kevorkian or whoever his replacement is. Uh, I certainly enjoy it. I say Clark Bozier says some things that, that I couldn't say. Uh, I guess he lives and breathes for, for Mexican food, I guess. And, you know, he, he even went so far to say, in heaven, we're all going to like Mexican food and eat Mexican food. I, I don't know. I don't know how preachers get by with saying that, but th- that they have no, no way to pr- prove it. I know a, a preacher in Detroit, Michigan said, in heaven, every Wednesday, we're going to eat peanut butter. <laughs> I, I don't know how they get, get by with that. I don't know. But uh, we say Jesus, and in the Spanish languages, they would say Jesus. Clark says in heaven, everybody's going to say Jesus because we're going to be eating Mexican food. Uh, I I can't go that far. Although a lot of Mexican food has entered the ministry. Uh, But some words here that we need to understand if we're going to enjoy this blessedness. 184, the word way is mentioned in this psalm 12 times. I learned some things reading about this psalm. Uh, One of the Puritans said that this is the psalm that David wrote while he was in exile from King Saul. What a time to be writing psalms, I would think. Human logic, human rationale would say, man, I'm fearing for my life. I'm going to panic. No, David's worshiping and writing about worship and teaching us. It's something. Same writer says in the strict Jewish homes, this may have been back in Puritan days, this psalm is the first thing they teach their children, this Psalm 119. The way of the Lord is mentioned 12 times. The word quicken we sang a moment ago, revive us again. Quicken is 11 times. The word law, 25 times. Remember, David says in Psalm 19, the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. You get that? There are going to be times when the, the grief, griefs of life lay hold on us and there's nothing that can comfort but the word of God. Talked to Brother Randy Bain twice this week. He called me and when, about David and Lydia losing their baby. And uh, I don't know what the circumstances were. It wasn't stillborn. The baby lived for three hours and then died, but I was texting back and forth with David Bain about that, and I said, as you know, that's a rest of your life grief. Birthday's going to come around every year anyway. You see, folks, that's something these lying, thieving, stealing, murdering abortionists are not telling these young mothers. There's something that takes place in the womb and in the heart. And I have talked to young ladies that have gone through that. And there's still a birthday in their mind that they can't forget. And the abortionists 
are not telling of this and telling the problems that young ladies are having to deal with because of guilt and shame. <clears throat> See? The word law, 25 times. Precept, another word for God's instruction and teaching. 21 times. Testimonies, 22 times. God's testimonies, are, and I understand that word testimonies is always plural. Statutes, 22 times. God's judgments, 18 times. Commandments, 21 times. And then just word, 38 times. If my addition is correct, that's 184 times. And then in this psalm, we have 17 times the words according to. And according to means by or with. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I want you to understand something, folks. If we're going to enjoy this blessedness that we're going to talk about tonight, it comes only through a healthy relationship with the Word of God. I don't know how much you're reading the Word of God and how much you're not reading, how much or how little. All I know is we're not going to read it too much. And the key to all of this is the Word of God. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and that seek him with the whole heart, they. The word they refers to the undefiled in the way who are keeping his testimonies and seeking him with the, seeking him with the whole heart. So happy, not just happy because they've uh, got their minds off of things, but happy in their hearts. Happy in their souls. They're undefiled in the way. Remember Matthew 7 where it says, Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be. And this word many here is translated. Uh, it means the word majority. Isn't that something? Straight is the way, and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few. And that word means the minority. To me, that's most alarming. But I understand the key to this way, they walk in his ways, they. They are happy in their heart, and that leads to happiness in the mind, even if you're being pursued and someone's trying to kill you. How many of you have someone after you tonight set for your execution? See, I've had a time or two in, in these 60 plus years, uh, fellas that say they're going to stomp me or something, and I'm glad they didn't. And some of them, when they said that, I was quite convinced they could with very little effort. But I've never, to the best of my knowledge, I don't have anybody after me set for my execution. Well, David did. He understands this way. Blessed are the undefiled that in the way, God's way. Jesus said, I am thee way you see I am the the undefiled in the way they walk in the law of the Lord blessed happy in the heart are they that keep and again this word keep look at verse 4 excuse me I hope what I'm dealing with is allergies I, I don't want to get this cold, but it's not like I've got all of this absolute control over it, you know. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Again, keeping them, guarding them, 
watching them. See? I, I, I don't trust lifeguards. When my, the fellows from our church, or especially my grandchildren, are involved. So we had our young fellows in the pool, and the deep end of the pool is four feet. <laughs> All right? But uh, that doesn't matter. Young people get to horse playing, hold somebody under too long, you know, or, or whatever. When we started, and I hope you can understand the illustration as, as I'm not just talking about grandchildren. The first day, Silas wants a life jacket because he's terrified of the water. He's tall enough now that his head sticks out of the water. And so he's, he's great. By the end of the week, he's doing cannonballs off the side, belly flops and all of this, swimming underwater without holding his nose. Absolutely now, no fear of the water. But the problem with him, he takes off swimming underwater and he has no clue where he's going. He's, you know, so I'm watching him, I'm keeping him, because he keeps coming up right in the middle of these other big guys playing volleyball. Or they've got basketball hoops set up all the way around the pool and these guys are going crazy dunking on them and all of this. And Silas keeps, if you don't watch him, he's right in the middle of that. I said, you're going to get crushed if you don't watch. So I'm keeping him. The idea of keeping here is guarding. The writers have to, they speak of it as a man keeps a daughter or a young wife, you see, or as grandfathers keep granddaughters, you see. So they keep it, they cherish it, they guard it, they protect it. They don't just give it a, a flippant, mindless reading every now and then. It's something that is to be kept, and that brings this happiness. Heard a preacher say one time, one of the most dangerous things you can do is just casually read the Bible. I disagree with him, but... At the same time, in a sense, I can, I can see it. The danger of it is it's going to give us this false assurance, this false security, better word than to assurance. I read my Bible today. I'm good. Oh, yeah? What would you read? What did you get from it? I don't know about y'all, but I'm real bad about doing everything in a hurry. And my reading. I've read that John F. Kennedy was such a reader, he could read six lines at a time. He, he had that. Ability. I know a preacher that has a photographic memory. He'll read the page, that's memorized. Read the next page, that's memorized. It'd drive you crazy to watch him and talk to him and, 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 and him do it. it. It's something. Well, I don't have that ability. So I'm reading and reading, and so often I catch myself just hurrying through it. Just kind of a casual reading. The Bible says give attendance to reading. Our, our thoughts tonight are this blessedness, getting this happiness. Let's understand something. Church-going people are going to counseling and psychologists and analysts just like people in the world are. Our lives get all bummed out. Here's something I, I and it'd take a guy like me, I guess, to pick up on it, I guess. Uh, Clark said, I heard him say it at least twice, that so much of modern Christianity will dumb you up, numb you up, but won't take you up. You know, everything's going so fast, everything's so fun, everything's so excited, it'll numb you up, it'll dumb you up, but it's not going to take you up, and it's not going to grow you up. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. 89, 12. 
please, of the Psalms. 89.12. No, that's not right. That's not right at all. Well, I've written 15. I'm, I wrote the wrong number down. It's 15. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. There again, there's getting in a hurry. Okay? And why? I, I get in a hurry in nearly everything that I do, but I never gain time. Any of you have come to realize it in our old age? My wife tells me that I'm driving, that I drive like an old man now. Miss Victoria thinks I'm preparing for NASCAR. <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, and, and I just, I just have to aggravate. I told uh, Joel, I said, now when we go to, we had and something else I do at camp. I make the run to, if we need drinks or water or whatever. I said, while I'm at Walmart, remind me I want to buy a couple of packs of lead weights. I'm going to put those in Victoria's shoes <laughs> for the trip. And uh, I never got, yes, I did. I started to say I never got that far out in front of her, but uh, concerned enough, you thank God for cell phones. And, and all was well. Coming home, there was, was, was not so much problem. They walk. They meditate in his word. Look with me in Psalm 32. Blessedness. We're talking about being happy in the Lord. And again, he's, his circumstances are not so good. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed, same word, same idea, is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no God, no guile. Well, how does this take place? In our first thought, we're, we're mindful of God's word. In our second thought, we're mindful of our sin, you see. In order for sin to be forgiven, it needs to be confessed. In, in order for our sin to be confessed, it needs to be acknowledged. Let's keep reading. Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. See, he's in great discomfort because he kept silence regarding his sin. But verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Happiness, even in grievous circumstances. I said the other night, hoping not to be too discomforting, but uh, right now the Stuarts and the Dominics have got the enemy death chasing them all around the house. And those kinds of cancers are on, and it's there is a divine blessedness that comes from his word and comes from his mercy. Look to Psalm 33, please. Blessed is he 
verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looked down from the Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. Now get this. Look at verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord, who? O ye righteous, the undefiled in the way. You see, folks, there's a great liberty in purity. There's a great comfort in obedience. There's a great peace, a great blessedness in being right with God. I'm not saying right on the victorious side of an argument. I'm saying living in obedience to God. Blessed are they who are under divine lordship. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Brother Gene, I, I, I would like to have someone in governmental control who will do like the Prime Minister of Australia and basically say to the Muslims, I don't care. You know, we're, we're not Muslims, so we don't care. But you, we better just, if God does not give us a reviving, we're in for it. Because this man has had more influence than most of us will ever believe. Luke 6, 46, a question is asked. Isn't that the verse that says, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not that which I have commanded you? I ask you again, if we've got all of this Christian activity, all these Bibles being sold and purchased, all of our churches, all of our Bible colleges, all of our Bible memory programs, and all of this going on, why are we not having revival? 46 of Luke 6, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? I take you again to 2 Kings 17, which says they feared the Lord and served their own gods. They profess Christianity and great relationship with God, but yet they do their own thing. You see, uh, they kind of straddle the fence, so to speak. And straddling the fence only works if you're really tall. And you can't run very long straddling the fence or walk very far straddling the fence till you're going to find out somebody left a pole sticking up. By that I mean there's going to be discomfort. There's going to be a fall. It's not, life's not going to be as pleasant as we think by straddling the fence. Blessed are those whose God is the Lord. Look in Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see. Now, the word taste here is not devour. Brother Gene's talking about his pork tamales and pork sausage. I started to speak and say, shut up or dismiss us in prayer and let's go eat. <laughs> you know, there was a, when Dinah was working at the hospital, there was a lady that came around ever so often that sold homemade tamales. I never laid eyes on her, but I just know ever so often Dinah would come home with them. Oh, man, I enjoyed it. As you can tell, there's a lot I enjoy. But the word taste here is experience. Not just eat it, but, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Trust. Yield, submit, 
obey. I like to just use the word surrender. The best explanation is the hymn we sing sometimes, trust and obey. Trust and obey. Let's go back in our minds, if we can, to the camp and the zip line. They, you know what they have at the bottom of the zip line? They have a scale. You see? If you weigh more than 250 pounds, they won't let you ride it. They don't trust it. They even dug out with a big track hole, a big, you can see where they dug out an area on the top of the mountain where they first set the thing up, some people's feet drug the ground. I'm not getting on that thing. You know why? Because I don't trust it. I exceed the weight limit, and I'm grateful. The last time I rode anything at all at Six Flags, it was that, uh, I can't even remember the name of it now. It has two loops, one right after it, Shockwave, I believe. And that's how old it was and how long it's been since I've gone to Six Flags. I rode that thing and I made it through the first loop and I'm not being dramatic. I thought I was going to pass out. That's how terrified I was. And then I just got my wits to me, and there we go again. So I got off of it, and I walked right around to the front of the thing, and I said to the lady running the thing, as if she's ever going to see me again, I said, if ever I walk up in the line again, you raise that, you know, there's a thing there that says you have to be so tall to ride that ride. I said, if I ever come up to this thing again, you put that, you know, Craziness. People will surrender to those things and ride all kinds, you know. I can't ride those things that loop you around like that. There's going to be a mess. That's as far as I'll go with that. I just don't ride that stuff. All right? I don't trust me. I don't trust them. Mrs. Arp, Diana's mom, said something to me on occasion. I've used this many times, but it fits here. He said, Chuck, I trust you and I trust Diana, but I don't trust the devil. And I, I, a lot of things she said, I hope I do forget. But that's one that uh, I'll never forget. Clark Bozier got going on the mother-in-law somehow. And about the guy took his mother-in-law and his wife, they were complaining about, his wife said, you never do anything with my mother and I. You just go off and you never take us with you. So he said, I'm going to Africa hunting. I'll take you with me. And they were all excited about going to Africa. So the lady realizes one night, my mother's gone, my mother's gone. And he grabs his big rifle and they go out. And the seven lions got his mother-in-law pinned against this tree. And his wife says, do something, do something. He said, the lions got themselves in that mist and get themselves out. <laughs> you know. And the relationship that my mother-in-law and I had, she loved mother-in-law jokes. Uh, I wish I could have had a chance to tell her that. But anyway, she said, I trust you and I trust Diana, but I don't trust the devil. So often it seems like we trust the devil more than we trust God. We may not say that in word, but we seem to say it in activity. In our surrender to God, blessed are they that trust the Lord. Psalm 40, please. Psalm 40, verse 4. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. We started off with saturating ourselves with the teachings, the instructions of God. And we're, we're undefiled in our way. We're walking in obedience. I'll tell you something, folks. You read these, blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. You can also say... The man that will not trust the Lord will not be blessed. We need to understand that. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust 
and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. God help us to trust the Lord and yield our lives to him. You can go on in your reading, and, and there's so many of these. Uh, Blessed are they that dwell in the Lord's house. Psalm 84, please. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to give you just a, a few quick, quick thoughts here, hopefully. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. He gains that strength in the Lord's house. The psalmist said, Lord, I love thy house, the place where thine honor dwelleth. That word translated honor, sometimes translated in other places, glory. Blessed is the man, Psalm 65, verse 4, whom thou choosest. Blessed are those that are chastened of the Lord. Psalm 94. Psalm 112, verse 1, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. All I'm telling you in this, folks, God has provided for our troublesome times. God has provided for our times of grief and our times of uh, discouragement. So we go into God's word. Revelation 14, blessed are they who die in the Lord. Blessed are those that take a stand for God. There are many other areas we see in Scripture where we find the word blessed is used. So, again, not to be a prophet of doom and gloom. But reality being what it is, we are faced with times of grief and suffering. We are faced with times of discouragement. I don't know about you, but I see situations where I, I think, nothing I can do. What can I do about that? I know if I say anything, the situation is just going to get worse. So God help us in these times to be a blessed people. Grief is real. Difficult times are legitimate. We, we dare not be uh, just crazy about it and think, oh, not going to happen in my life. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. God help us. Our Father, thank you for the blessedness of your word. And we look at this and we see that you really are interested and concerned. And you have provided for our blessedness. Please forgive our sin. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.